Hi, I'm Jeff Galvin, the CEO of American Gene Technologies. Before I get started, let me just give you the normal legal disclaimer that we're going to make forward-looking statements and that this is not a guarantee of future performance. So, what's the exciting news? Well, you may know that American Gene Technologies is an advanced gene and cell therapy company, and one of the things that we've been working on is an HIV functional cure. Now, we submitted the IND about a year ago, and in August, that IND was approved for a clinical trial, a phase one human trial of an HIV cure attempt. Now, uh, this is tremendous news. Uh, we've been working on this a long time, and we have tremendous confidence that this has a, a good possibility of providing a functional cure for HIV patients. Of course, this would be huge for HIV patients. And why is that? Because they're suffering from lifelong antiretroviral therapy. That may control the virus, but it comes with a lot of side effects that really diminish their quality of life. So they're getting uh, headaches and diarrhea and fatigue and uh, nausea. Uh, this is a daily problem that many HIV-infected individuals face. They're not ha they don't have to worry anymore about dying from HIV. It won't progress to AIDS if they stay on this antiretroviral therapy. But it, that comes at a cost, and that's just the short-term cost. The long-term cost is things like uh, liver, kidney, heart disease, extra cancers. They get early aging, bone density issues, osteoporosis, brittle bones. They're in and out of the doctor all the time, and so they're not just taking twenty to $30,000 worth of antiretroviral per year. No, they're much more expensive than that to the insurance companies because they're in and out of the doctors for these comorbidities of the low-grade viral infection and the uh, toxicities of the antiretroviral treatment, and as a result, a normal HIV patient can cost fifty to $100,000 a year for a insurance company, and they can be on that insurance for decades. All right, so what are they looking for? Well, they're looking for a one-and-done treatment that would make them permanently immune to HIV. This is called a functional cure. Uh, without the use of antiretroviral therapy. It would suppress the virus naturally, or it would suppress the virus for the rest of their lives from the genetic modification. Well, that's what we've created. How does it work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take HIV um, CD4 positive T cells, so these are called helper T cells, HIV specific ones. They uh, are in your body to detect that pathogen. So when somebody encounters HIV, these HIV-specific CD4-positive T cells are the first ones to arrive at the pathogen. Unfortunately, they're the first ones to get infected because HIV virons can actually infect T cells. This is the problem. HIV has developed the ability to infect and deplete the protection against HIV. But what we can do is we can harden those HIV T cells so that they're uninfectable. And what does that mean? It means that when the HIV-specific CD4-positive T cell arrives at the viron, instead of becoming infected, it can clear the viron, just the way that your cold T cells clear a cold or a flu T cells clear a flu. That's the idea, is to improve these T cells just a little bit so that they have an advantage over the viron. And there's a well-established theory that says that if you remove the door handle off the outside of the cell that HIV uses to get into it, that you can create a protection against HIV infection. That's done by removing a uh, receptor called chemokine receptor number five. And this has been well proven in previous experiments, and it's part of the theory that we are using to uh, render patients, uh, their HIV-specific T cells, immune to HIV infection and to restore natural immunity to HIV so that these patients can clear it just like they can clear a cold or the flu. Okay, so what do you need? You need an HIV-infected individual that is well-controlled on antiretroviral therapy. That means they have to be on normal ART for one to three years, and at that point, they have HIV T cells again. Once they have HIV T cells, what we can do is take a 400 milliliter Luca pack, then we put it into an 11-day automated cell process that's done on a benchtop unit 
that could be uh, purchased by any hospital. It doesn't need a clean room. It's an automated cell protocol. It needs a trained operator, but it's the kind of thing that any hospital or clinic could put in place, and that means that they should be able to deliver this treatment anywhere in the world. What does that benchtop unit do? Well, first thing it does is it uh, stimulates the T-cells with a peptide mix that increases the activity of the HIV-specific T-cells, and then we do a depletion protocol to get rid of as many of the non-HIV T-cells as we can. The reason for that is it saves vector, and that makes it uh, cost less money. And the only important T-cells in clearing HIV are HIV-specific ones, so the other ones don't matter. So we get rid of them, and then we put in only $35,000 worth of vector at that point, and we're getting 90% transduction of these HIV specific T cells, 90% or better. And that is stripping all of the CCR5 off of them and making them immune to R5 viruses. But the other thing that we do is we put in short interrupting antisense strands. We put in a gene that creates these antisense strands into those cells that will block the activity of known clades of HIV, even the ones that are not R5 strains. So this gives very broad protection to those T cells, not just against uh, R5 strains, but also X4 tropic strains. It's a technical thing, but it means that it's broader protection than what you've seen in previous experiments like the Berlin patient or the Syngamo study or other ones like that. Okay, last step is we culture them up to a billion cells. And the billion cells is roughly 10 times the normal number of CD4 positive T cells that you have against a specific virus once you've cleared it from your body. So we actually think that this would, should be between uh, 3 and 10 times more potent than it needs to be to give you natural protection or to give an HIV-infected individual natural protection. After that, it's a matter of cryopreserving it and taking a portion of it and putting it through release testing to make sure that it is uncontaminated and that the cells were modified correctly and are healthy. And then finally, we reinfuse it into the patient. Once it has time to engraft, which should take about a week or two, then what we believe is that they will no longer need antiretroviral therapy. This obviously is huge because the antiretroviral therapy is what everybody wants to be off. And the most important thing is that we not allow the virus to rebound and that we keep them suppressed sufficiently that they can't transmit the disease. We think that this can do it. The main reason we think it can do it is that we're taking out of the body what turns out to be about a million of these CD4 positive T cells. And over 11 days, we're turning that into a billion cells. All right, a billion cells, as I said, should be about 10 times the number that you need. Now, upon reinfusion, there will be some of these cells that are damaged and that will no longer be active in the body. But we believe that more than half of the billion cells will survive the reinfusion and it will still be more potent than necessary to keep that patient virally suppressed. Okay, why am I so confident in this? Well, one is because we have the HIV Dream Team. Uh, David Pauza over here uh, is probably known to a lot of you. He's been in HIV for uh, research and treatment for um, over three decades, almost four decades now. So he's somebody that really knows this inside and out and he has led an amazing team of clinicians and scientists and advisors uh, and consultants in order to iron out all of the details on this process and to get the data that has convinced us that it is possible to cure HIV and to finally bring this to a clinical trial. Now, the other thing that makes me confident is that we showed our preclinical data to NIAD and they got very excited. <laughs> they got excited enough to ask us for a collaborative research agreement so that they could validate the data that we were seeing uh, in our preclinical uh, tests and in our, our IND development of the process and the protocol and they wanted to try it on their own patients at arm's length to see whether the data that we were showing to them was actually correct. And what were we showing them? Well, what we were showing them is that the uh, product that we were making from these HIV-infected individuals 
was able to clear a remarkable amount of HIV viremia and latently infected cells. And they were able to actually reproduce that data in their labs. We only gave them the vector and taught them how to do the protocol. They used their own patients. And then they reported their data in an article in molecular therapy. And this is really an exciting article. And if you are scientific, I would recommend that you read that. I think it would give you big, uh, a, a great amount of confidence that we have sufficient potency in this cell product to uh, give HIV infected individuals a functional cure. All right, so now there's another benchmark that's worth discussing, and that is a very important study by Singamo. Now, Singamo actually uh, took an autologous cell therapy that uses zinc finger nuclease to clip CCR5 genes in order to protect these same target T cells against HIV infection. But there's a big difference between Singamo and ours. One is that our uh, method for knocking down CCR5 was 95% effective. Theirs was less than 10% effective on the target cells. And the number of HIV-specific T cells that we're returning to the body that are immune to HIV is 2,000 times the amount that Syngamo was able to return. Now, why is that important? It's important because Syngamo was getting one out of 10 patients in durable remission. So our hopes are that by having 2,000 times the potency, okay, 2,000 times the number of cells, and having 90 to 95% reliability instead of 10% reliability, and then on top of that, protecting not just against R5 strains, but against other non-R5 strains, that this may be a functional cure that crosses that threshold of actually providing durable protection for most of, of the people that receive this treatment. So we think we may have something that is quite practical, that's uh, a economic benefit to the insurance companies and a quality of life benefit to the patients and also beneficial to society because these people are permanently immune, cannot recontract HIV and cannot spread it around. So we're very excited about that and the clinical trial is just beginning. We will go ahead and we will recruit um, our first patient in October, so this month. Uh, by the end of this month, we should have our first patient, Luca Ferrist, and we think we'll get safety data in January. Uh, next summer, we think we will show efficacy signal. So this should be an exciting nine months, and I hope you'll keep uh, in touch with us and look at our website or receive our newsletters or go ahead and get attached to our uh, social media so you can track this very important project. Now, H AGT is much more than just the HIV cure. I know that would be enough, but what we've been doing is building a platform of reusable components that you can mix and match and cure a myriad of diseases. As a matter of fact, there are numerous patents and numerous technologies that we've developed in the uh, project for clearing the chronic viral infection of HIV, but those things would actually work on hepatitis B, HTLV, human papillomavirus, herpes, Epstein-Barr, CMV. So there's a lot of other chronic viral infections that this platform would be capable of reaching. But we've done more than that because we have a whole monogenic platform as well, and we have an immuno-oncology asset, which is incredibly exciting. Now we've had a valuation on our IP uh, portfolio. So in other words, the data and the patents, and we have uh, 13 patents in the United States, 100, over 100 patents internationally that are all in process. And so this is a huge portfolio of very important innovations and fundamental discoveries and, uh, and new uh, techniques with viral vectors that could lead to a huge number of different types of disease cures in the future and could provide a platform where anybody could collaborate with us and be 80% done with their drug on day one because our platform does the heavy lifting of delivering the uh, genetic cargo at therapeutic levels safely in a targeted manner in the body and our collaborators only need to know what they want to get at. Now we've used this in HIV of course but we're also using it in solid tumors and our monogenic platform is being demonstrated by a best-in-class 
uh, cure for PKU. Now that's in the preclinical stage, so we've got a lot to prove on that, but we think we've got something in our pipeline that may be a cure for uh, phenylketonuria. I would be remiss though if I didn't tell you about the solid tumor cure. I'm gonna go over that real quickly right now. When you get a solid tumor, uh, it turns out that the solid tumor ends up forming because your natural immune system that clears all small malignancies from your body for most of your life and for two thirds of people you, their entire life, but one third of us may get enough malignancy in our life that you start to get it growing together. The natural immune system doesn't eliminate it and it turns into a solid tumor that is a health threat. Okay, so that's what it might look like is just a bunch of these cells growing together and the immune cells may still be around but they don't have the capability of eating away a large solid tumor because it's blowing up like a balloon. And they can get one or two or three or five cells but they're not sufficient to get uh, the solid tumor once it reaches a critical mass. But we can change that by just putting a small amount of viral vector into that tumor and converting about 20% of the cells to secrete a stimulatory small molecule that excites a special T cell in your body called a gamma delta T cell. It, it attracts every T cell in your body and it causes them to uh, be trained, proliferated, and activated. Activated is the important thing because they start eating at 300 to 600 times the normal rate. Well, what happens? Well, they turn around and attack that solid tumor, and that solid tumor, of course, is obliterated. But here's the beneficial side effect. These things continue to circulate in your body while they're eating away that primary tumor, and they will end up finding all of the secondary tumors and all of the metastases and eliminating them without further treatment. That's called abscopal effect. Imagine a day where a uh, malignant breast tumor or a malignant uh, prostate tumor only needed a small injection, just a needle syringe, into that primary tumor and that was the whole treatment. No surgery, no radiation, no chemotherapy. And uh, we think that that is possible. Now it's further down the road, but we have a thousand mouse study already that shows a complete remission in 85% of the mice with a single shot. And this is in human cancer models using human gamma delta T cells. And it is multifocal and multi-type cancer in the mouse body. So this is a very exciting result, and we, uh, you know, we, it's going to take us a couple of years. Our collaborators at Stanford Medical School, Dr. Dean Felsher, is a global expert in hepatocellular carcinoma, and we think we'll be testing this in liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, in 2022. So stay tuned on this one. We've got a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening to my presentation, and we'd be very happy to uh, speak with you here at the conference or to uh, get you connected to the company in some other way. Please uh, look for our social media and connect up with us or go to the website and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you very much.